everyone. Welcome to the Resistance Broadcast. I'm John. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is our Monday show, which means we're talking about Star Wars news, and we got a bunch of cool stuff to talk about. But first, one second. Oh. The Who Are You champ is in the building. That's right. <laughs> On Thursday, I slayed James Bainey and continued my reign of terror as the quote king of TRB. And there's nothing is that any a diva's belt? can do about it. It's a fantasy football belt. But uh, it's real. It looks like a diva's belt. No. It's like the old school, like, ultimate warrior intercontinental title. But anyway. the diva's belt is white. So. Whose belt loops does that fit? You know? Yeah. Asking the real know. questions. I don't know. But more importantly, I'm the champ. John was like, look at this belt. And I was like, it's a woman's belt. And you're like, who does that fit? And John's like, it was just a bit. Let it go. <laughs> anyway, um, guys, it's uh, it's it's still crazy out there in the world. A lot of madness. But um, being down in the base always feels good. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about before we get into the resistance report was um, Rosario Dawson uh, on ET basically confirming that she's gonna be Ahsoka but not allowed to say it. Uh, did you guys catch that? It's an easy way to get in trouble. Yeah. It was very, I'm not saying it was aliens, but it's aliens. Yeah. She's like, I'm not saying it's confirmed, but aliens. I right. can't wait for that story. <laughs> I hope that story does get confirmed because that right. would mean I was playing that character. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it yeah. was uh, yeah, it's just one of those things it was semantics where pretty much aside from her saying like I don't like pronoun not pronouns, adverbs, I don't know. Where she was just like instead of saying like <laughs> I am excited, I will be excited, but replace those words and that's how she feels about the fact that she got the role. So um Right. And her her saying this is the most interesting part to me. Her saying it was one million and one percent the fans that made it happen. <laughs> made what happen, Rosario Dawson? Right. <laughs> if it did, she was like, if, if, it, it, did. if it did. <laughs> right. And then she's like, oh, I'm crossing my fingers and my toes and my eyes. And then she tried to like make it like goofy as though she was like making it play it off a little bit as a, as a uh, potential thing. But mm -hmm. when she said that, it made me, you know, hopeful about the make Solo 2 happen stuff. And, you know, the Clone Wars were allegedly saved by the fans and that movement. And if this was a fan casting, she called it a fan casting. I've never heard that term before. Maybe that's been used. You've never before. heard that term? Uh, is that a thing? Fan casting? Like that <laughs> are actually, you serious? No, no, no. That yeah, actually fan happens. casts are a thing. That actually comes true. Like where oh, fans made a yeah, movement and someone got a role. Hmm. Uh, I mean, that's fair. I probably could think of some. Uh, but, J. Jonah okay. Jameson came back for Spider-Man. But he had to yeah. come back. Well, I, I, no, no, no. But he, he crossed universes because they were most people were pretty open. Like, you got to change everybody in this universe. But if you were to keep one person, make that person cross over, and they did that, it. That, yeah, and it was, like already, a, it was like a fan service him, thing. Yeah, I'm just I saying. I'm trying trying to make draw a comparison, but no, I get you. I'm just trying to think of has there ever been a, a time where fans pushed for something based on like that art, boss art, art boss logic art that she yeah. saw that she tweeted about, and then fans got on top of that and it snowballed into this big thing like for her to play Ahsoka for, for like three years, and then it, mm -hmm. it, it formulated. So obviously, you know, Lucasfilm <laughs> and Disney paid attention to that stuff, and they obviously caught wind of that movement and they're like you know what let's bring her in so i mean that that right. stuff is interesting to me and of course i take it and think about solo and a follow-up to solo and stuff like that so um again it's just one of those things where if they they listen all the time and james they even told you they're well aware of make solo to happen that sort of stuff if they find a way to make it make sense and make it work they'll do this stuff so who knows what's going to happen, but I don't know. Um, I thought that clip was kind of interesting. Do you guys have anything else on that before we uh, move on? She definitely got that role. <laughs> I don't know why yeah. that she's playing this game of like, yeah. I don't know. And I can only imagine Disney's like, why? why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. 
You know, it's funny too because we, after the fact, we hear a lot of people say that they still didn't know they got the role. Like after they were confirmed mm. for the role, I, I, I'm kind of playing devil's advocate because I hear what you guys are saying and I do believe that she is well aware and she's playing the cards right now. But I wonder if there's any chance where she's like, look, I'm hearing it everywhere too, but nobody's given me the call. Well, that's, right. that, that's the Ewan McGregor thing. You know, he, he knew for four years he was coming back, but he's like, you know, trust me, no one wants it more than me. Uh, if they call mm-hmm. me no, I'm down, I, you know. Well, I'm saying that I think Ewan McGregor knew what was going on and that he was the man and that they weren't obviously going to choose anybody else. But Rosario Dawson probably thinks she, she could potentially think she's on a, a short list <clears> and she's probably got it. It's between her and somebody else, but they haven't confirmed except for all these other trade publications. You know, well, also Mando's done filming and she's if she's in season oh, that, two, she oh, already, <laughs> yeah, 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 she already filmed <laughs> you're, her parts. You're totally right. I forgot about that. <laughs> already yeah. done. Yeah. Already so done. here she is being an actress, being an actress by saying, I hope I get a role that I was already in the makeup for and already did stunts for and already did work for. Like she's if she's in season two, she already filmed all these parts and she's sitting here saying, I hope I get the role. So it's just a funny <laughs> She's sitting there with her phone with pictures of her in the costumes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, like looking down at it off screen. She's like, I just, I, I hope. Like she's like flicking through. Know. I hope. Like imagine that, it, like, imagine there was a. It's coat her rack. lock screen. Yeah, Ma- like there's a coat rack or a hat rack behind her, and there's like Togruta horns just hanging in the back. Like, yeah, <laughs> like it says, like thanks for being a part of Mando signed John Favreau. And she's like, Oh, let me cover those up. Sorry guys. Um, I don't Could know. you imagine she, she jumped on like a video call and the picture behind her is a framed photo of her with John Favreau, like in the makeup. Just like- yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All of a sudden her phone rings Ooh. while she's on that call. It's call waiting. It's John Favreau waiting to yell at her. <laughs> <laughs> you have a Either call way, from John Favreau. You have a call from, it's like a ringtone. Right. It does right. an announcement yeah. thing. It's like an accessibility thing. <laughs> it's yeah. great. And he leaves her like 10 billion voicemails like he does in Swingers. The most, one of the most yeah. awkward movie scenes in the history of cinema, in my opinion. But um, <laughs> have you guys seen that movie? We've talked about that, right? No? No. All right. That's good. Very good. All right. You bring it up a lot, though. I love it. All right. Um, all right. So, James, the Resistance Report, why don't we get into that uh, right now? It's the Resistance John, the resistance report this week is full. We have a lot, and I seriously mean that, a lot to talk about. Every one of these things could be the big headlining story. Um, But, uh, well, let's kick it off real quick with uh, some casting announcements. Now, we might even roll this into another one. I might mix up the show notes a little bit. Um, But uh, Stellan Skarsgård and Kyle Solar, Solar? I'm going to say Solar, S-O-L-L-E-R, uh, join the cast of the untitled Cassie and Andor Disney Plus series. Um, this came, uh, you know, late last week, um, but uh, a, a good, interesting announcement, right? Because of some of the things that these people have been associated with in the past. John, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So, um, Stellan Variety, Scars- by the way. Stellan Skarsgård is in one of my favorite movies of all time, Goodwill Hunting. And he plays the professor who kind of gets so obsessed with um, Will because of his genius and that sort of thing. And he's kind of like um, the rival to Robin Williams' character. He's the one who was successful and that sort of thing. So I thought he was awesome in that movie. And he kind of got overshadowed because of how great Robin Williams was and and Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, the whole crew and all that stuff. Uh, So I've been a fan of his for a long time now. Um, he's also been in big franchises. He played uh, in Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, he did the one of the guys in Avengers. People are going to be mad. I forgot the other guy's name. Uh, in Chernobyl, which uh, I watched recently, but which you you watched a little bit of too, James. I think. But um, um, I actually still have not started it. But I think the Chernobyl connection is really cool. Yeah. So he won. A, he just won a Golden Globe for that. Um, so he's a very established actor. Been around for a very long time. Swedish actor. Um, and then you have uh, on the flip side, uh, I have to look at his name again here. Kyle Soler, who I, I didn't, I never even heard his name before, to be honest. And that's, that's on me. You know, I'm, he's a successful actor in his own right. Uh, but he hasn't been in a lot of things. Hasn't really starred in a lot of things like the Brexit 
movie on HBO uh, is mm -hmm. one of his more recent um, things. He played a like a medic, medic number six in Fury uh, a few years back. Um, now, we don't know what kind of roles they're going to play, um, but the two things I take away from this as positives is forward movement with the Cassian series. We know it's kind of been feeling like it's been a little rocky. Um, obviously, productions are halted. Um, they had said that they started some pre-production work recently that had to halt because of the COVID-19 stuff, but casting is still happening, so that's good. Mm -hmm. um, and that they have you know, someone of uh, Skarsgård's caliber coming in is, is a great thing, too. Um, so, you know, these are, these are positives for this, uh, series. Um, and, uh, that's pretty much my biggest takeaway on that. Uh, I, I think it's cool. Lacey, what, what are your thoughts on these two particular individuals coming to, <laughs> what's that? Mo oh, idiocracy, particular individuals, uh, coming <laughs> to, uh, Cassian Andor series. So I feel like I keep saying this, um, but it's true. Just like exciting announcements that things are happening <laughs> i think it's because i'm in this state of losing my mind in my house that i'm like there's stuff happening there's mm -hmm. a future ahead that gets me all excited but um i'm actually pumped for Skarsgård. he's a great actor he's in a ton of stuff um the Skarsgård actors the family is just like great and everything like all of them are great mm -hmm. uh we have the guy that plays eric on true blood and then the other guy is it yeah Bill Pennywise. Skarsgård. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, this guy in particular, when I saw that announcement, I was like, he's got to be playing a bad guy. Because, like, he's got that face. Like, some mm. people have a bad guy face. And yeah. this is one of those people that when I see it, I'm just like, oh, he's a bad guy. You picture him in, like, a, a fully 100% gray outfit buttoned up to his neck. Yeah. I see him <laughs> being a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh he just he just looks like a bad guy and then in every like in avengers he plays the scientist that then kind of goes crazy yeah, uh, yeah he's a good yeah. he's a good guy but they made him bad guy yeah right but he's a very good bad guy when he goes bad mm -hmm. um yeah i don't know that's it, it's exciting it's cool i i'm i'll be more excited when i get to see actual pictures of the production happening um, but I feel bad for Diego Luna because, you know, everything he gets interviewed, he's like, yes, oh. it's happening. <laughs> Lacey, Kyle Soler is from Bridgeport. He's born in Bridgeport. Represent. Represent. I was born in Bridgeport. Were you? It's like we're related. Were yes, you really? I was. Yeah, I was born in Bridgeport. Wow. St. Huh. Vincent's. <clears throat> Very nice. Very nice. Um, I looked up a. a Everyone's clip. like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Neat. <laughs> I mean, that is, that's Great a cool story, coincidence Lacey. for sure. Um, That'll be I the tease a, for the episode. <laughs> yeah. Of uh, of yeah. Kyle Soler today. Um, he did like this old, uh, I don't know, like Little Women era, whatever era that is, like television show. And I was watching some clips of him there. And I, oh, nice. I was like, I was like, yeah, he just, he seems to me just like, um, he he's he's good like he's not great he's just good at what he does he's a fine actor that's cool we're probably gonna bring him in maybe this is a little bit of a break for him but to me personally say, yeah break yeah to, to me personally he seemed like just another like resistance officer or not resistance mm -hmm. um rebellion officer or someone kind of maybe of the same caliber uh as him um uh, like a 006 to his 007 if you will potentially um right just just a, a side character um the scars guard thing though uh, obviously we know him from a lot of stuff john you mentioned that what i was surprised and maybe neither of you picked up on it i mentioned it in the thing is his connection to chernobyl we just talked last week that the the new guy for the production production design team is from chernobyl so Mm -hmm. is there any connection to him coming in they're like hey do you know anybody or or you know it's all about who you know hey i've worked with this guy before or you've worked with him before do you think you could get him a call do you think he'd be interested yes let's get it on paper let's make it happen quick obviously these characters being cast i don't want to say late in the game but assuming they were gonna start production at some point it still feels like you know they're putting things together um and there's been yeah. a lot of you know there's been Let's... a lot of casting for this so i feel like these might not be like super big characters in the show um they're kind of like hey would so and so be interested in doing it um sure let's get him on board uh but i'll give James, him a call 
let's not forget that they brought Gil- Tony Gilroy back, um, the guy who did the recuts and rewrites for Rogue One, to rewrite mm-hmm. the pilot for this show. So these guys may have not had characters that existed in the original set of scripts. And then when this, you know, Gilroy comes in and he's rewriting the pilot, which means, I mean, if you're rewriting, rewriting the pilot, that's taking, you're starting over. I yeah. Guess. Right, right. Uh, so these characters may have been brand new to that new version. Um, and maybe that, that these wouldn't have existed prior if they were going to be filming their original mm-hmm. set, which all the reports last year were that they were going to start filming this thing last fall. It was supposed to be so, out in 2021, right? It, yeah, which we and we know is obviously yeah. not happening. I mean, they may not even start filming in 2021 at this rate, but who knows? But yeah, right. Yep. Well, uh, that's cool. Um, <laughs> well, that's cool. Uh, it's whatever, I guess. Yeah, um, you know, just being a star. James is gonna get cool. off this show and just be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do want think, it so bad. Think, I think it's gonna be great. Do, do you think like someone like Stellan Skarsgård, who's like an actor's actor, is like, hangs up the phone, is like, I booked another job, and then just goes yeah, to lunch? Uh, well, or he's like, I'm in Star Wars! <laughs> <laughs> I think someone I think someone of his caliber would be like, um, I don't know, it's like when, it's like when you're interviewing uh, celebrities and you've been doing that for a very long time, you kind of, you're like, okay, this is part of the game, I'm interviewing so-and-so. But I think there's still like a certain level when you're like interviewing a Steven Spielberg for the first time. I think no matter mm. what, you're going to go like, uh, Star Wars is a big deal, you know? And yeah. it's cool right. to book a part or be associated with that. I never thought I would have done it. It's not even really my thing, but I know it's a big thing, so it's cool. Yeah, I think, right. I think Star Wars kind of has that. Um, yeah. But let's talk about this announcement fr- that came just straight from StarWars.com. This is no trade. Just threw it out there, and everybody was completely surprised when Disney announced that they are doing an eight-episode documentary on the making of The Mandalorian, and it's going straight to Disney+. Plus. This is a big deal, guys. Uh, we-, we might even... Uh, um, ha- we might have to dust off the old Mando fan show set, John. Um, well put. We we're we're on camera. It's not a physical set. I just wanted to put an asterisk next to that, and make sure everybody knew. <laughs> Everyone's like, "TRB uh, has so much money; they have sets." <laughs> <laughs> no, the best part of that was when James and I were on the phone talking about something else, and he goes, "How come John didn't ask me before announcing that? I got to ask my wife first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still haven't told her. You know that we might be doing more shows on Friday or whatever. Mando mm. fan show. And John's like, we're doing it. Here it is. Uh, yeah. Well, now, thought, it's I thought, fine. I thought, I thought, yeah, I thought we agree, but that's fine. We're just poking um, fun. Yeah. We're just poking fun. Yeah. Lacey, uh, what, what are your thoughts on an eight episode documentary on the making of the Mandalorian? I'm so excited for this. As you guys know, I love behind the scenes stuff. I love the Mandalorian. I think this will be really, really fun to watch. I actually enjoyed... Um, the Rise of Skywalker documentary more than The Rise of Skywalker. I will openly say that. I liked Director and the Jedi more than The Last Jedi. I just love the process of making films that from beginning to end and everything that goes into it and like fun facts and, you know, oh, we couldn't make this work. It's like all about problem solving a lot of like, oh, we needed to get this shot and we couldn't get it perfectly. So we used this and, oh, this actually isn't CGI. It's you know, we put beans in a, in a desert and then we had them sit in these beans. Like, what? <laughs> like, what is going on? So I think it's going to be really cool, especially what we've seen from uh, the, it's the volume, right? I don't want to get the name wrong. Volume, yeah. like that huge I think so. room. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the piece we've seen so far is really, really cool. So if they've already released that, I can only imagine what they're going to release is even cooler than that. Um, I better get a section just on the puppet on Baby Yoda. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to see a lot of those behind the scenes photos that were taken throughout the process explained in this documentary. Like the George moment, Mm. uh, the IG-11 moment, being Mm. in the sound studio, that kind of thing. And then I also really hope we get more of the random people that stopped by the set because you know there were a bunch yeah. That'd be really cool. Mm-hmm. 
My yeah. my quick take on this too, and I'll jump over to you, John, is that I I think that it's not a eight episode uh, by coincidence. I think that eight is is telling that what it's going to be is the first episode of this documentary is going to be a deep dive on the first episode of the Mandalorian. And Mm -hmm. that's, that's how they're going to explore it. Um, that they'll talk about why they, you know, it's, it's kind of like we get like rebels recap and other things like that. They kind of talk about behind the scenes stuff, but the behind the scenes that is related to this particular episode, why this character, why this location, uh, what was the point of this episode as a whole? Where does it go? What was Mm -hmm. the direct, what were we thinking and all that stuff. And then I think to pepper in what Lacey's saying too, is that um, as you get those guests that came and visited, they all didn't visit on the same day. George visited, let's say, on the third day. So that's a good third episode boost, you know? Um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, you, you get what you I'm think saying. They're doing I, I, a, you think they're doing an episode for each chapter? I think that could be realist. Yeah, yes. that could happen. Wow, I never thought of that. Hmm. So you just I thought they also- just filmed all this stuff and spread it out over eight episodes? <laughs> I I don't know. Um, I, go, go ahead. Finish your point. I, I don't mean I wasn't looking to step on you on what you're going for there. But um, well, I just uh, no. I mean, I think that's I think that's what it is, is I think that as as you get to like episode five, you're going to be able to explain, you know, what was the thought process as I'm going back to Tatooine there. There's no there's no reason to bring that up in, in the first and second and third episodes. You know what I mean? You have a perfect fifth episode to talk about the fifth episode. So I just thought also that, you have all the different directors too. So yes. each episode will be with that specific so director. The, the, and I don't mean to be like rejecting your mm-hmm. um, speculation on this, well, but yeah, I don't know, but in, in looking at how they're presenting it and showing what's going to be in it, I have a hard time seeing how it would work in that way because they're saying things like there are round table discussions um, and not each episode is going to have a round table discussion. Um, They have a section about George's legacy, George's Star Wars legacy. Um, They're not going to say like, well, this chapter deserves to be the chapter that includes the section of George's legacy. So I think it's just going to be like, one ep- cha- episode of this is going to be about puppetry. One episode is going to be about developing the scripts. And John Favre, mm-hmm. the first one's going to be about how and, he came yeah. with the idea and met with Kathy. And I wanted to do Boba Fett. And they said no. And blah, blah, blah. And then one's going to be all about Baby Yoda or something. And then one's going to be about the sound engineers. And one's going to be about Filoni. And then one's going to be about George Lucas. And they're going to kind of segment it that way, I think. So that if you say, like, I want to learn... Or I want to watch the one about, you know, the sound effects. Bang. Mm-hmm. That one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, that's my take. I could be way wrong. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is, you know, this one's about chapter seven and this one's about chapter eight. And because that could work too. Either way, everything I'm hearing, <laughs> it's, it's exciting no matter what they do. I mean, like Lacey, you said, this stuff is my supplemental Star Wars material more than like, books or comics and that sort of thing like live action star wars and behind the scenes making of books making of documentaries is i could throw on that stuff on youtube even like stuff in you know with french subtitles if i find anything that's behind the scenes of star wars at any point in any time i watch it and i love it so this makes me very excited especially john favreau like i've never seen a behind the scenes of a john favreau thing and he's done so much cool work over the years Mm -hmm. um this really excites me. And yeah, whether we, you know, how we work out covering it on the podcast, we're you know, still trying to obviously iron that up. But, um, the, no, this, we're going to do the Mando fan show. Woo! Woo! We're I'm doing it. Yeah. Um, we're doing it. I just, I just love this. I do. I don't know if they're going to do it for each season or if this is just special because it's the first Star Wars series and it's the first season. Um, so we shouldn't expect to get this for every series. And every season, um, like so, you know, just to temper our expectations with that. But this is awesome, man. This is just so cool. Right. Yeah. I can't help but be super excited from what we heard behind the scenes about the Mandalorian, where um, unfortunately Pedro didn't play the Mandalorian a lot. So I think that this show is really going to give those stunt guys a spotlight 
and let them have their moment of all the work that they did behind the scenes when I think a lot of people don't realize how much of it wasn't Pedro. Yeah, they may be careful with that too, though, because Pedro Pascal does. I think it would be cool to be honest. Yeah, I know, but he's. It's like with the panel, they're like, "This is the Mandalorian," and he comes out, and it's Pedro Pascal, and everyone like bows, and he bows his head. He's so like humble about it. Of course, I don't think I'm sure he played it it on a important stuff, but yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't fight. Right. They're gonna bring in a fight guy, and I think they said in season two he's playing him more though. Unless I think they are. I think yeah. he is. Well, he's yeah. removed his helmet and they've done a reveal. So at, at this point now, the character could say, I'm kind of toying with both sides. You know, maybe I can release my helmet mm-hmm. now. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm kind of with Lacey. I, I take, take yourself out of like the Star Wars bubble for a second. Like, does it hurt the Mandalorian if they come on this show? Because anybody who just watches the show, they're like, oh, yeah, that's Pedro Pascal. Every scene, they're not even thinking about it. And then when they see in this documentary right. that not every scene is played by him, um, you're like, oh, yeah, I guess I, I didn't think of that. But that makes that makes sense. He's obviously <laughs> he doesn't need to be there on the stage, but still he's the actor that mm-hmm. plays him. I don't know. I, yeah. I, could, I could see it both both ways. It's interesting. And, John, I think you and are right. And it's John Wayne's grandson in a Western. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, John, I, I yeah. actually think that's how they do like the Imagineering document documentary, I think, too. Right. Yeah. So that that does that's a good point. I think the only thing that really stuck out to me was the fact that it was eight episodes. If this was four episodes, I'd be like, Oh, that that's probably right. Sure. The way you're doing it. But it was eight, so I was like I see it. I see very it. specific see it. to the, eight episodes. The, I bet these are thirty minute episodes too. I'm sure, yeah um which bring it on you know that's a lot that's yeah what was that two four hours so it's as long as the mandalorian basically um the other two things i was thinking of you just reminded me when you're talking about like him not being in the suit for season one you know we had kind of found that out and i don't know if it was completely public or not but i know seeing a lot of tweets from fans and stuff saying like man pedro pascal is such a good actor the way he like tilts his head subtly as he's looking at things and i'm like imagine pedro pascal's like was it me? But I'll take the credit for it. Like, yeah, it wasn't. All right. him. Um, I think that we, the person I heard it from, <laughs> knows someone that worked on the project, and they said that it was like eighty percent wasn't Pedro. Yeah, I, I had heard he wasn't even in the costume pretty much at all, except like that last <laughs> yeah. scene, like like uh, almost like they do with um, a lot of the old Batman stuff with stunt work. But um, which is kind you know, of why, like I said, I wanted the stunt guys to get their they're due because they did the majority of the work yeah you, you know yeah. what's interesting though the right Definitely. now there's there's a show called the voice and if anybody doesn't know what it is it's celebrities that are like in these costumes and they come out and they sing and they dance and they give clues the mass singer oh that what did i say the voice yeah the, you the said voice. the voice i I'm was sorry. like that is not the I'm voice sorry. The voice. they do this they go <laughs> yeah I the mass you. <laughs> the mass singer is the thing they got from Korea that they brought over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I meant yeah. the mass singer. But um mm-hmm. the thing is is that even if you know it's that person because you know the clues and you know the the voice and stuff, you're never 100% sure. And knowing that he was barely ever on set, I'm actually kind of surprised that they didn't just go with the um the keep keep that secret keep the guy secret he goes the whole season you're like that's that's his voice i know it i know it's him and then but but for the most people there's just like that's the voice of the mandalorian it's through the mask it's whatever but then Mm -hmm. they pull his helmet off i mean that would have been mind-blowing people have been like that's the guy from game of thrones except for him trying to book other work he wouldn't been able to be like yeah you know i'm the mandalorian for disney (laughs) well I mean, Can't put yeah. that the ultimate the pickup you're... line. The yeah. ultimate pickup line. I, I don't am know. The Mandalorian. It, it does. It does kind of surprise me as <laughs> as little as he may have been involved that they didn't just that they did like truck him out and they're like, "This is the man. There he is. He's yeah. your guy." Right. From uh, before mm. even episode one airs, but or maybe, um, maybe the 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 MSW making Star Wars stories forced their hand on that. You know, like yeah. he had leaked that out. But the other thing, speaking of, you know, making people appear, not to drag this story out, but the George Lucas thing just makes so much sense uh, to like show people like, 
George Lucas is still around and he's seeing this show be made and it's cool. So, you know, mm-hmm. if, if he's going to visit your set, you're going to take as many frames of his set visit as possible and put it into this documentary. So I think we're going to... It's also... You're going to have a camera guy follow him around from the moment he gets out of the car. Sure, yes. sure, sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and not to mention anybody else. Like, I think the Russos went there, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, like, I mean, George uh, Lucas, like, if they show him pointing at something or, like, moving a prop, they'd be like, George, it was involved. He helped. And he proves it. Forget that. He yeah. cradled Baby Yoda like it was a child. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, that that's... I wish well, we he saw, is the like, child. But. He... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I mean. He's a puppet. Yeah, we need we need like an HD shot of that because it's still that out of focus. Like, let me quick it take it. It's blurry. Quick, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that flip phone shot. <laughs> Imagine we watch all eight episodes and George is never in it. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oh, the he worst. He slips under the radar. They edit him out of it. He's like, you got to fuzz me uh, out of that. I don't want anything to do with it. Imagine if it was George, but they had his face blurred like in a crime special. But like, you know, it's George. <laughs> And they lower his voice. So the rest of his body is the plaid shirt with the jeans and the shoes, but then his face is blurry. <laughs> and then they lower his voice like they do, and he's like, "It's like poetry; it rhymes." Yeah, yeah they it's just like inter- everybody they interview knows him, but he's saying. all yeah, he's interviewed, but he's all blacked out, like he's in a witness protection program. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, when I made the prequels, I mean, when the prequels were made, <laughs> like, <laughs> uh. No, I, oh, uh, again, I'm still kind of dragging it out too, but I was thinking, is there any chance that, you know, they bring in some of those people just because they knew they were going to be doing this behind the scenes thing. They're like, Hey, you know, Russo brothers, like, why don't you come down here? Uh, y- you know, you'll get some people think you're having something to do with the show. And then later we'll be able to shoot this behind the scenes stuff and you'll get some publicity there. Your friend, come on down, check it out. Or well, they just you know, pop by. Uh, I feel I mean, like they just pop by. Too. Like John Favreau yeah. saw someone somewhere and was like, "Hey, come on by!" Like, he yeah, but Bill I'm not Burr. gonna like, be as watching. As soon as Bill Burr said that, I was like, hmm. "I don't know." You, like, do you think like they were gonna be watching this documentary and they're gonna be like, "Look who just walked in the door"? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying like I think that they filmed their experiences there, but the reason they showed up is because John was like, "Hey, I'm doing the show. You want to stop by?" Or he, yeah, it was like one of those things where it's like, hey, why don't you come back, come down anytime we're filming on these days and like, like someone making a decision to get off an exit to stop at a Wendy's. They're like, you want to go, you want to go stop at Mando? All right. <laughs> stop at a Wendy's. Yeah. Um, I got nothing right. to do today. Yeah, well, speaking just of, go to Mando set. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of Mandalorian and uh, people coming to the set, <laughs> uh, Ming-Na Wen might be coming back. Uh, it's it's a rumor right now, um, but uh, that character was seemingly shot, seemingly dead. We saw a body laying there. I don't know how a character comes back from that, but there's always a way to be like, oh, you know, it's thunder or something, whatever. Um, but yeah, John, t- tell us a little bit. What do you think about uh, the potential return of Ming-Na Wen as Fennec Shand um, in season I- two? Yeah, I mean, I think you don't show that little cliffhanger epilogue scene of that mysterious person approaching her if she's dead. Um, It wouldn't have made all that much sense unless it was one of those things like, I can't believe you shot my friend or, you know, whatever. So to me, that laid the ground that she was going to be saved or brought back. Um but I, I gotta uh, I gotta shand it to the hashtag show for uh, getting this scoop. They did a great job with that. So um, no, I, I think it's cool because a lot of people really hyped her involvement. And again, it was one of those things where when we were watching season one, it's like, when is this person gonna show up? Where's Cara Dune? Where's this person? Where's this person? And then she shows up, and it's like, just as soon as she arrives, she's out. Uh, and people were pretty peeved about that. And Favreau's like, remember, like people were mad. They're like, oh, they killed her off. That's such they a were. disgrace. Yeah. I can't believe you. John Favreau sucks. Like, uh, blah, blah, blah. And Favreau's just sitting there like, everybody, just cool out. We got a plan. Uh, I don't need to tell you what my plan is right now. So just relax. And <laughs> here we go. She might be coming back. So all that outrage and, and nuttiness was for naught, um, which we'll get into later. But uh, I think it's cool that she's coming back. 
I, I want to see more of the, uh, I love seeing the sniper type of uh, weird assassin mysterious characters in Star Wars so um, I'm down with it I think it's cool Lacey yeah I think she came and went so quickly I remember on the Mando fan show when I w- when we talked about her being in the show I was like that's it she's she's in and out like that because they did make a big deal about it when they announced her Disney was like oh Mingna from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Mulan she's coming in and everyone was like oh what does this mean is her role the whole season is she going to be hunting the Mandalorian and then he's she dies um but like John said I don't think she's dead because uh not only because that epilogue piece but also because you don't see any blood which is a Disney Star Wars thing that you don't usually see blood um, and then not only that, her face, her head is facing the camera. So usually in camera, like in movies and stuff, when someone dies, they don't show their face. That like kind of lets you know like they're dead. Like you see their feet, unless it's Snoke, then they just show. I was just face. gonna say t- say Snoke, say Snoke. Um, he's he's a good example of the opposite. But generally speaking, they show you like the feet or something, and it's assumed that they're dead. But this, they like showed her face and everything. Um, so I don't think she... I think she's going to return, which they say she's going to return. Great. Uh, I hope she has a bigger part because right now it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> um, Do you guys think there's any chance that the only reason they're bringing her back is because they need to shoot some scenes with the introduction of this new character? They tease the new character walking up. This guy walks up. He looks at her. He rolls her over. He sees her face. He they, picks her it up. could be a girl. Well, uh, okay, that's fair. I was I was saying that because of the Michael Bean thing, but sure. But um, but yeah, he, he picks her up. He takes her back to this place. He, you know, I don't know. He sh- takes her to the guild and says, "Look at this. This person killed this this uh, known assassin. They need her for the dead body." Aspect. I'm gonna, what do you think? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say no because if they knew that was gonna happen, they filmed that part when they filmed season one and save it. Um, now these guys got a scoop from somebody that she is back for season two, which is yeah. separate filming to me. Um, so someone mm-hmm. involved with the production leaked this, talked to this po- hashtag, uh, that, that hashtag show and uh-huh. told them like, she's back. She's doing season two stuff. If it was just that, um, again, and they rolled her over and they show her and they add to that epilogue for season two, I think that's something that they probably already hadn't planned, so that they film it then and there and get that out of the way and just keep it in the game. Yeah. I just always think it's really cool when when uh like movies like the third one they have to like go back in time and then they have to like shoot this the same scene from you know and they're back wearing to the their old too, costume with the second Jennifer. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, but that's a an example of how it didn't work out. But Back to the Future 2 and many of the examples, yeah, they had to put him in the outfit again so he could shoot Johnny P. Good from a different angle, you know, that they yeah. didn't have before. Um, so I, mm-hmm. I think that kind of stuff is is really interesting when they're like, well, we don't know what we're going to do for season two. Oh, it actually, we're going to expand on this and this is the story that we're going to tell. Um, so we need to go back and rebuild those sets. And no, re- I say rebuild those sets for The Mandalorian, LOL. Um, <laughs> it's all, <laughs> it's a computer. It's just, uh, just upload the image just or like bing yeah yeah file open um uh l- last story though uh now we actually kind of had a really good discussion on this a couple weeks back um and Lacey, i'm going to start with you on this one but daisy mm-hmm. ridley uh kind of made some comments uh on the backlash of the rise of skywalker and had some comments and things to say about the the state of social media and where we're at um in this uh day and age when it comes to that type of stuff. So um, it was just interesting that it came so quickly after our in-depth discussion on it. So if anybody wants to go back and check that out, Lacey, what, what did you think of the comments? Do you think she's right or wrong? Anything to say? Well, first of all, John did a great job writing this article. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Who said that? Um, what? <laughs> also, it was kind of crazy how crazy this article went. Uh, Mm. when it got posted, which John will get to. Uh, But my thoughts on what Daisy said, she's not wrong. You know, they put, we saw it and she mentions it too, 
We saw in the Rise of Skywalker documentary how much love and passion and care went into this movie. And then the backlash backlash that it got from fans and critics and whoever because of a certain things that didn't happen for them is just kind of crazy. And I keep saying crazy because it is. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's where she was coming from is, you know, with TFA, we got so much love for that movie. And I adore that movie, as you guys know. It's like one of my faves. Um, And everyone was excited Star Wars is back. And then The Last Jedi happened and there was some negativity. And then they thought, oh, Rise of Skywalker, we're getting the crew back together. JJ's back. We're going to have all that feeling back from TFA. And they didn't get it. And she's just like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. She's like, I, I figured people would, would have love for it. And they don't. But that's what it is. Um, but her response of, hey, when you don't like something, that's fine. You're welcome to that criticism. But we've said it before. We're now in April. And people are still raging about this movie every single day. And I... I personally don't know how someone can hate something so much because it's exhausting to hate anything. So right. the fact that we're still talking about this four or five months later uh, is is exhausting. And someone like Daisy Ridley sees that. I'm sure it doesn't make her feel great. Um, but I was happy she finally stated that the reason she didn't stay on social media is because she, of her own choice of, hey... Yeah. This was exhausting. I felt like I needed to post all the time, which she said before, but she was like, hey, I was in LA at a friend's house and I was like, oh, I don't know what to post and I don't want to be on here. And my friend was like, hey, you don't have to. And she was like, you're right, I don't. Mm -hmm. So she left and she said it was one of the best things she's ever done. And some celebrities just aren't on social media. Like Jennifer Lawrence isn't on social media. She was never really on it. She does a Facebook page and that's like it. Um, and they people prefer their privacy, and Daisy Ridley is one of those people. Um, does that mean she didn't get harassed? No, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that's not the ultimate reason that she left. The reason she left is for her own choice of saying, this is exhausting, I don't want to be a part of this, I'm out. Not because of someone was mean to me. Because I think mm-hmm. she's a little tougher than than people give her the credit for. Well, without a doubt, yeah. Yeah. John, what, that was a bit uh, of a tangent. You're welcome. What was the What was the story <laughs> with uh, you writing and putting together this article? So when I saw on um, that she um, had this uh, appearance on the Dragcast, I think it was, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and she actually her commenting publicly on uh, backlash to the rise of Skywalker and her thoughts on social media and her social media preferences. I thought it would be a good opportunity to address you know, what's been going on with fans in Star Wars, specifically online and on social media, because you really don't sense any of that outside of the internet. Um, And the internet, for whatever you want to say about it, has its goods and bads. Like, you know, the three of us wouldn't have met if it wasn't for that, you could argue. And a lot of people who meet a lot of their close friends or, or their fellow podcast hosts or people that just love something they love, it's easier to find them on the internet than going somewhere else. Uh, Mm -hmm. But with that comes the bad. And what the bad is, everyone has an outlet and everyone can be heard and everyone can be seen. I think that's attractive. Uh, So I wanted to write about that. And I I personally think I I handled it in a careful way with facts and respect and that sort of thing. And what I got in terms of feedback was a lot of, uh, you know, hate thrown my way for writing the article and i was kind of shocked by it because i didn't expect that i actually when i wrote this article it's kind of like my experience walking out of seeing the rise of skywalker i'm like oh thank god everyone's gonna like this we're all gonna be good (laughs) that didn't happen uh so after i wrote this article you know i even ended on a positive note like uh, we could all be better i've done stupid things i've you know i've taken the turn down to negative town and you know i gotta be better um i'm not sitting on some soapbox here uh so people were mad at you know, the article and how I wrote my take on it. But if you look at what I wrote, you know, threatening somebody like JJ Abrams over a star Wars movie is just not cool. And because just because you don't tag his Twitter account saying things like if I was in a room with Hitler, Osama bin Laden and JJ Abrams, I would put two bullets in JJ Abrams head is not funny and it's not cool. And I just did a quick search of that and found like 10 of those. And those have like 
500 likes and like that sort of stuff like celebrities get death threats all the time that sort of thing but that sort of stuff is just so insane especially this day and age with all like the shootings we have going on uh, you know i i'm i take that very personally from my own you know family experiences but i won't get into that any further but I had people saying like, well, why would you say that? We didn't tag him. It doesn't matter. We can say whatever we want if we don't like something. I'm like, yeah, but there's also a line to that. You know, if you walk out of the theater and you don't like The Rise of Skywalker and you want to take to your Twitter account and say, that movie sucked, I hated it, I didn't like it, good, do that. You want to spend the next few weeks or month dissecting every part of it that you don't like? Fine, do that. But if you want to carry that out, like Lacey just said, for five or six months and keep doing that day after day, day after day, people aren't going to want to be around you. The only people that are going to want to be around you are people who are also like that. And it's just going to fester a culture of negativity around yourself. Now, if you want to surround yourself with that type of environment, fine. But then when other people are saying, let's try to be better and move on and look for things that we like as opposed to things we don't like, and you want to sling arrows, I don't think that's right. So I got absolutely slammed by this. And I'm sorry, I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent here, but I had these groups of fans in the Raylo community, not all Raylos, who dug up an old tweet of mine from 2018 where I made a joke about Adam Driver's looks. And they took this screenshot from a two over two-year-old tweet and started calling me a Nazi, a white nationalist, all this stuff that I, for some reason, I hate people of color. And they tried to just pass it around and try to, like, paint me in a certain light and stuff like that all over writing this article. The funny part, part about that to me, to round out my point, is at no point in my article do I mention any fan group whatsoever. Not the menace people, not Raylos, not anybody. But some people read this article and saw themselves in my article and I think that to me speaks for itself. Uh, so I, I, don't, I don't have any much more to say about that, but I think, it, I think people really need to relax for a bit and if you're if your goal is to be heard about you not liking something and five months later you feel like you're still not getting the point across enough so people understand that you don't like something, then maybe you're not doing it right. Um, and that's really all I have to say about that. And the last part being, you know, the evidence that Lucasfilm and Star Wars are going to be having a hard time getting people to want to work in this franchise. And people think that that's a bunch of hoo-ha. It's not. Like Tom Holler, the editor for Del Rey Books, took to Twitter and said, I wish I could tell you that intensity of Star Wars discourse or the way some readers feel it's appropriate to treat writers hasn't had an impact on finding new authors willing to write for Star Wars. I wish I could tell you that. I really, really do. There, He's telling you right there, point blank in public, they're having a hard time getting writers to want to write Star Wars books. And that is just a writer of a book, which is a very small spotlight compared to Someone like a Ryan Johnson or J.J. Abrams who has to deal with someone saying that they want to kill him over a movie? We got, just got to be better, guys. And that's it. Done. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously good points. Um, Daisy Ridley, you know, I think what Lacey was saying it didn't particularly leave for those reasons, but those reasons still exist uh, none, nonetheless. Um just as a quick my point of view before we head into scoundrels rundown um i do sympathize with daisy in the sense that sometimes it feels like if you're not doing something or you're not checking social social media you're missing out on something um or you are going to fail because people aren't paying attention to what you're saying and they they should be um and it doesn't always have to be the case uh you know we can take breaks and we can um, walk away. We don't have to make it such a, a priority thing. Um, it, it even gets tricky with us because we feel like, um, if we're not on social media, then the whole of the resistance broadcast kind of suffers. So there's also that, like a little bit of pressure there too. But at the end of the day, I think we all do a pretty good job at, at not, um, you know, being like, dude, you haven't posted anything all day. You know, it's like, it's like, well, it's, yeah. it's our personal accounts, you know what I mean? And we don't really think too much about it. And we're all very well that, aware that if anybody wants to be off social media, it's that's just totally normal and that's the way it should be. So um, we're, um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. We're kind of accepting of that. But, uh, but that, I mean, that's all I have to say about those comments. I think Daisy Ridley's right in, in that particular case. Um, but also kind of sorry to hear that it t- took a turn down that road, you know? Um, the craziest thing about that whole situation, 
because I watched it happen. And there's, we've reached a point in social media that if you see someone getting attacked like that, there's nothing you can do. Because if you stand up to them, then you get attacked. And then you're just as bad as everybody else. And then you just kind of feel helpless. And there's nothing that you can do as you watch someone that you care about get torn apart by people that don't even know who they are, don't know what what they're about. They just Mm -hmm. know them based on a tweet from two years ago that it wasn't even that big of a deal. Like, people make comments about everybody's looks all the time. It doesn't mean that they're a bad person. I would say someone saying they're going to murder someone is a little bit worse than me saying, hey, this person isn't good looking. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, no, the craziest thing is that John was being accused of being a Nazi and being a part of the fandom menace. And then people in the fandom menace were calling him an SJW and telling him to stop listening to people's feelings. (laughs) So it was a lose-lose for John. (laughs) He was just in the middle. Um, yeah. it was just another reminder of like, guys, this is a movie about space wizards and like right. talking bears and like, it's, it's not that serious. Like I get it. It changed me. It made me who I am. It's important to me, but it's not important enough to make someone feel bad or tear them down. I don't care. I'd give it up if that, that's what it came to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say. Daisy Lid- Ridley is lovely. <laughs> they're like, yeah, someone was like, you see this tweet of yours is going around? I'm like, which one? They're like, this one? I'm like, April two- 2018? <laughs> they saving him like that trading was cards? Like, <laughs> that was literally when I joined the podcast. Yeah. They're like, have him saved. And they're like, all right, you use this one. Go get him. <laughs> well, the, we, we actually kind of recently went through that as a culture, like on a, on a bigger platform too, when people were saying like, uh, I mean, the whole James Gunn thing happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's like guy like he's been reinstated now but but think about the the turmoil or think about what he's thinking about when he gets fired for the project because of jokes that he made over a decade ago you know yeah and it's like that right. was just like a knee-jerk reaction that the, that caused so much stir up that um there and then there was a lot of pride going around like well we're we're not gonna hire him back just even though we feel like we probably should well, maybe we just wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and then hire him back. You know, it's like, it was like they knew the fault was already <laughs> there and they and just had to like, to, to be clear, figure out a way for, around it. For people who may not have known what my joke was, it is way different from what James Gunn was doing. My joke was literally just about Adam Driver being attractive. That was pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. The joke I, was that people wouldn't care, which you said this on the show. People wouldn't care. Some wouldn't care. Some would not. Some. Care. Yeah. Some would not care if he looked like Paul Dano yeah. or Dano or whatever <laughs> right. his name is. Which I'm pretty sure you said with BSR on an episode. Probably. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. But Twitter, which was like, like my. Boom. second I mean, if it's one of John's of jokes on Twitter's, he definitely said it on the show too. Oh, there <laughs> yeah. And then he also yeah. included it. Yeah. And, yeah. You know. <laughs> But um, yeah, it, it it was a wild couple days. Um, I know James has been through way worse, so he and, he and I had talked on the phone about that, and um, Lacey talked to me. I'm just paranoid that my my now each one have you have been through that. I'm waiting for what's happening to me. Yeah, <laughs> just so it's so it's I don't so know. Funny. Yeah, and what what to, to cap it off? One person was like, "Have you ever gotten death threats before?" I'm like, "Yes, I have." I wrote that I wrote an article that I loved The Last Jedi, and there were like a thousand comments, literally a thousand comments on the article. Do the math. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, the only thing I want to do right now is scoundrels run down. Yeah. <laughs> Let's Lacey. do it. Oh, one, two, three. Punch, Punch it. it. That was pretty good. All right. So on to a more positive thing. This is kind of funny that I'm saying this now. If you're enjoying this episode of all this talk of Daisy Ridley and Mandalorian and just us in general, I know we're pretty awesome. uh, You can support us in a lot of ways, like on Twitter and YouTube. You can comment below or like this video. You can uh, follow us on all the audio platforms like Spotify and SoundCloud 
or you can join us at patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. Uh, we have different tiers and you get all different kinds of access from mini episodes. We do over eight a month, uh, polls, group chats, all different types of stuff. So check it out at patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. All right. Mm -hmm. Next, we mentioned it a little bit earlier, spoiler alert, but attention Mando Fandos. The Mando fan show is coming back sooner than we expected, as we'll have new episodes about the Mandalorian documentary series, so stay tuned for that. John, are you pumped? Woo! I am. This is a big reveal. We should have saved it for this part of the show. <laughs> yeah. I think the best part is when they announced the series, I was like, oh, this means we could probably do the Mando fan show. And John was like, what? Mando fan <laughs> right. show? And then he tweeted, because he was yeah. so excited. I got a tweet. All right. Also... <laughs> Don't forget to tune in to the Clone Wars fan show this Friday on the Star Wars Newsnet YouTube channel as James will rate, review, and discuss the 10th episode of the final season of the Clone Wars. James, nice. are you still pumped for Clone Wars? Oh, yeah. We're in the, we're in the end now. The end game. This is the end, the end game? <laughs> the yeah. End game. <laughs> awesome. So make sure to tune into that. Until I'm, next time. I'm all about it. Uh, taking my jokes now. Chewy, please get us out of here. <laughs> hey, all right, listen. We talked a lot about tweeting on this episode, but guess what? Now it's your turn. It is time for Ask the Resistance. I've been wondering, what are midi-chlorians? Okay, here's the deal. We asked you guys to send us questions, and you do, and it's great. Or sometimes you just tweet using hashtag Ask the Resistance. We find it, and we put you on the show. Some of you are a little shy, and you can email us at resistancebroadcast at gmail.com, or sometimes our patrons will shoot us a DM or something like that, and we get them there. Either way, we have uh, some to get into here, so thank you all for sending your questions. If yours doesn't get picked for the show, don't worry. We like to go back and bring some back in, or you can submit it again next week and, and give it a shot, but we appreciate everyone getting involved. It's so awesome. Okay, uh, first one is going to go to Lacey. This is from Andy Kirk at Andy Hi, w. Andy. Kirk. I'm uh, kind of getting his handle there, Andy. Um, he asked, I assume it's a he. There's Andy's that are she, but um, could a younger Cara Dune make an appearance in the Cassian Andor series? Lacey, what do you think? <sighs> I mean, I feel like it's one of those things that as Star Wars fans, our first gut reaction is, oh my gosh, this happens during this time period. Who can we shove into this thing that's happening at this time? <laughs> uh while I love Kara, I've said it online, I've said it on the Mando fan show that she's my favorite character on that show. I don't think it would make sense. I think it would kind of take away from Cassian's story. And after all this time, James wants a Cassian story. Let Cassian have his moment. Hmm. So no. All right. Cool. Cool. Um, James is smiling because he knows I'm right. Yeah. No, that's not why. Oh, why? John. Okay, here we go. James, this next question <laughs> is going to you. I assume that's what you want me to do here? Yeah. All right. This is by Toy Matt at Toy Matt 3369. Uh, will we see more flashbacks in season two of The Mandalorian? And what would you like to see? James? <laughs> Don't do this to me right now. Obviously. <laughs> We're going to get The Mandalorian in the Cassian Andor series. Makes perfect sense. Oh. We're just going to shove him in there. Shove him in. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I just thought it was so funny. I was like, wait a minute. I was just thinking about this earlier today, and it was because of my question. But yeah. a younger Cara Dune making an appearance in, in one of these other shows. Actually, I wasn't thinking about Cassie and Andor. I was actually thinking, is there any chance that you show a flashback of the Mandalorian? How old would he have been about solo time? But I they, they, they wouldn't do that. But I do think I do think they're gonna show flashbacks. Who would I like to see in there? Of course I'd love to see Aaron Alden, or Aaron Alden, well, like now I get to give his name. Aaron Ald, Aldenreich. Am I saying that right? Alden Aaronreich? Aaronreich, yeah. Why, why am I not? I can't get that out. <laughs> um, in yeah, Mando? Flashback? 
Well, I'm just saying, if they did flashbacks, who would you like to see? I was like, no, well, they said, that would... what would you like to see? It could be an event that happens. It could be a... Oh, I guess that's... I, I read the question as, if they did flashbacks, who would, you, who would you like to see? Um, <laughs> Maddie, But no, it. I mean, wouldn't that be cool if they showed him back when he was, you know, in his formative uh, foundling years or whatever, and you see like a, you see a Cassian or something like that? That could be cool. Could be cool, right? That'd be interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Doesn't really hold any relation to the story other than uh, the connectivity of it, but I would love to see that. I think that would be really cool. Nice. All right. <laughs> uh, any one particular character you would like to see in a Mando flashback? You Is is a young Han Solo your one, or is there um, someone uh, more connected to Mandalorian culture or anything like that? Um, let's go back to a prediction I had or, or something I, I saw online that I thought was really good, which was the whole Yoda thing. I would love to flash back and somehow show me, uh, Yoda in the Mandalorian. I think that would be nuts. Right on. Very good. All right. Uh, next one is by Fluke Skywalker at one Fluke Skywalker. Hey, Fluke. All right. He's a Luke. great Luke Skywalker cosplayer, by the way. Is he? He's the one that looks just like Mark Hamill. Which kind of uh, Luke are we talking about here? He does Luke from The Last Jedi. Oh, okay. Hmm. Old, angry Luke? Yeah, and he does other Lukes too, but the the ones I've seen... Like, he was at San Diego Comic-Con as Last Jedi Luke, and he's created, like, a mob scene at a booth because they thought it was really Mark Hamill. Imagine Mark Hamill walking around in costume. <laughs> I can imagine <laughs> That would be really funny. He'd never um, do it, but he did walk around in like stormtrooper costumes. Stormtrooper, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Uh, well, Fluke, good job on the cosplays. Um, keep it going. Uh, your question was: Do you think, or do you know, if Disney has plans to do anything with Broom Boy from TLJ? Thanks for your reply. Slightly smiling face. Oh, that was probably an emoji, and it turned into text when I pasted it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, I, I do not think they have any plans to do anything with Broom Boy. I think Broom Boy... First of all, Ryan Johnson said that was um, a nod to his childhood. Broom Boy was him playing with a broomstick mm. as a kid, pretending he's Luke Skywalker. Mm. I think that that was more of a... Um, I don't know if meta is the right word there. Artistic but, choice. Yeah, more of like a re- self-referential thing and a nod to kids who wanted to be Luke Skywalker sort of thing. I don't think this was some supposed to be some sort of cliffhanger or a he's the next one or anything like that. I think it was just a, a symbolic sort of thing, a nice little nod to all of us who grew up wanting to be Jedi. Um, so I do not think they have any plans to explore um broom boy uh from tlj in the future though i bet in 15 years when that kid's 25 he's going to appear on podcasts and be like yeah it was cool with the ring and, and the <laughs> thing and you know but uh, get him on no. now let's get him on now yeah we can just get him on now yeah uh probably past his bedtime but actually they filmed that a few years ago he's probably in like high school now right he's like <laughs> yeah. i don't want to talk so to you <laughs> tweet it i wasn't in that uh, movie <laughs> tweet at broom boy ask yeah. him to come on the show his, his handle's like at Tamiri Blag. He actually got his character's handle. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I, I don't think they're doing anything with him. Um, but let me know if you wanted it to. I, I apologize if I'm disappointing with my answer, but let me know what you think on that. And thanks for the question. Uh, guys, last one here. Uh, all of us quickly. This is from Younglings Podcast at Younglings TV. So a, a kid's uh, podcast. Um, do you think it would have been cool to see a montage of who was present in the rise of Skywalker at the ba- battle of Exegol? I love the movie as it is, but I know if we had seen little snippets of Jason Kaz and the rest, I'd have freaked out even more with happiness. Um, Lacey, what do you think? Hi, younglings TV podcast, podcast TV, whatever that was. Um, Yes, and I believe James went on a rant about this a couple of weeks ago about how like it would mean so much to him if they just put like one clip of Christopher Sean in there. And I completely agree. Like it takes nothing to do a minute, not even a minute, because a minute's a long time in film. Yeah. Like 20 seconds of just quick we're here. Gotcha. Great. I think someone actually did an edit with that in it i saw it kind of passing around online where they cut together character voices um that could have been so easy it would have made so many people happy 
Um, and it would have been like a real fun bringing everybody together Avengers moment. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I think they should have, or I would have liked to see it. Just my real quick take too. If, if you can go back and find that episode, but also I, we, me and Kyle really get into it on the book discussion of the novelization, because that's, I think what you're thinking of Lacey. It's in the, it's in the novelization. They are all there. They Ah. do get lines. And in oh, the audio book, cool. you hear them talk. Uh, so you actually hear Kaz like, hey, what's up, guys? I'm really glad to be here. And it's like, wow, <laughs> did you this- freak when you did you freak when you read it? <laughs> um, I mean, like, were I you did- pumped? I, I was. Yeah, because I went I went over to um, my coworker and was like these characters have lines in the novelization. They're there. Like we already knew they were there because I think they said that their ships were there like on a star Wars YouTube video or something. Um, but, uh, it was like the author took advantage of the situation. They knew that fans were going to love this and this is the opportunity. It's the expanded edition of the story. So this is my chance to write in lines and say who was there confirm a couple of their names um it's not a long list i mean it didn't kill the book it wasn't like they were like oh oh and that guy the other one who was like in the background you know what i'm talking about he was the one who has the face and like he was there too look i'm gonna give him like a paragraph like it wasn't like that you know it just it happened really quick but they hit a lot of the main ones you know they're talking about the ghosts they're talking about resistance stuff like Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it, it was good um, they should have done it in the movie. I just don't understand where, like, even in the movie, they like they'll cut to like an X-wing pilot that's just a random X-wing pilot for this movie. You know, hey, they're a person right. too, James. I I know, mm. I I know it's important to build the scene, but it's like, can't you mix in a couple of these? And I mean, they did. Yeah. They mixed in Wedge, right? Yeah, that would that um, was still. their big fan servicey moment, right? Yeah, I mean, I saw an edit where someone did a minute or so and said, oh, I wish this was in the movie. And it was literally like 50 voices saying like, blah, 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 <laughs> check it in, blah, 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 standing by, so-and-so over here, blah, blah, blah. Stand-. And it was like 50 seconds. And I was like, this is ridiculous. I was like, this wouldn't have, this would have been so dumb in the movie. No That's offense. why I'm saying like, I'm saying yeah. like a minute is too long. So yeah. like 20 seconds, maybe 15 is about. A good- but again, I think we're back to the bubble versus not bubble. Cause a lot of fans love that edit. They're like, man, they missed it. This would have been great. And inside the mm. hardcore fandom, it's like the, the best fan edit thing. But if you put that in theaters and people are sitting there listening to this, like, uh, all right. Like what? Yeah. It, it would have been weird. And even if they did film that, it probably would have been cut. Uh, but I get what you're saying. Like, in the little happy medium, maybe showing a couple of them or something like that. But then you also have the can of worms. I can't believe they showed this person and this person, but not this person, this person, and this person. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. They could have done maybe it the, like... Maybe the Wedge thing did that, but I don't know. They could have done it like Power Rangers or anime style where they like just all come on the screen at once and they're like, reporting <laughs> in! <laughs> and oh, like, my, like the, oh my the lines. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, they're do like all giant, divided perfectly and they all say the same thing at the same time. It's one giant Zoom call and they're all just on their own <laughs> yeah, yeah. box. Yeah. And then as they're in. getting killed, they just like disappear. Yeah. <laughs> off. Yeah, like Minesweeper. Um, no, but I mean, it's a great question. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Um, and thank you all for all of your questions. Um, and again, keep them coming. We really appreciate it. It's, uh, the amount that we received this week uh, was shocking and, and awesome. So thank you so much. Um, remember to use hashtag ask the resistance and, uh, keep sending them on down and we'll hit you guys up uh, again with those next week. Um, but that's, uh, towards the end of the show now. So first we want to thank all of you so much for listening, watching, uh, being a part of the resistance, make sure you are subscribed to the show. We have two regular episodes every week on Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, you can subscribe on YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, all other uh, podcast apps. We're pretty much there. If there's one that we're not, let us know. We'll try to get on there, but we're pretty much everywhere you can find us. Uh, so subscribe wherever you prefer to take in your podcasts. If you are watching us on YouTube, um, you may have noticed that we're kind of doing this new thing where we're saying at this time, we're going to, the three of us are going to hop in to the comments and answer and reply and have a conversation with all of you. So do guys, do you want to do that again for this episode? Just I say think it's, so. it's always noon. It's Let's say noon uh, on Eastern. today being Monday, East 
Eastern Daylight Savings Time. We're going to hop into the comments, so uh, we'll meet you there if you want to join us over there on YouTube. And also like the video and share it because we're really trying to uh, get more eyes on our uh, presence over there on YouTube and uh, bring more positive Star Wars content up to the surface here. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do here. We need your help, so thank you so much for that. Uh, make sure you're, of course, going to StarWarsNewsNet.com every day for all of your Star Wars news, reviews, editorials, information, and more. All the articles that we talked about on the episode today is from our site, StarWarsNewsNet.com. Um, like Lacey said before, Patreon.com slash Resistance Broadcast. If you want to get more TRB stuff or simply support us, uh, you can head over there, check out the tiers. They start at just 2 bucks a month. Uh, and uh, grow from there. And each uh, tier you go up, you get more access, more benefits, more perks, more content, stuff like that. And we do eight mini episodes every month, Q and A's, and it's uh, very immersive and a great community. And also we have a Discord server uh, for tier three and up. So if you want to get away from the madness of Twitter and that sort of stuff, the, the TRB Discord base is a pretty good time. Um, special thank you to our generals. That is Carmelo, Andrew Staley, Jeremy Myers, Neil Shaw, David Probus, John Reese, Micah Harrison, Tampa Movie Guy, Michael Gaines, and Val Trichkoff. Generals, thank you all so much for your support. We can't do it without you. We really appreciate it. Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey and writing at StarWarsNewsNet.com and doing some editing. Uh, James, how about you? Um, Twitter and Instagram at Meyer Trunks. Lacey. People can find me and my pizza shirt at Lacey Gillerin on Twitter and Instagram. All right. Do you see it, guys? Uh, you see it down there? See, she's wearing her pizza shirt. Oh, yeah. There it is. Wait, so, <laughs> wait. There it is. Did I do it right? I don't know. Something anyway, like that. Yeah. Guys, we <laughs> hope you have a wonderful week. And, of course, we'll see you on Thursday, where we're going to talk a little bit about what really is the balance of the force. We're going to try and figure that out. Uh, but until then, we hope you're all doing well. We hope you're all hanging in there. And we hope you enjoy your week until Thursday, when we see you right here on the Resistance Broadcast. See you around, kids. Bye.